Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna talk about how we can find real int roots. So let's talk about what an nth root is, what we're talking about. So at the top we have just a couple examples that hopefully we're familiar with and we can kind of uh, derive or come up with what these nth roots are. So let's start off with three squared. Well, we know that three squared is nine. So if we do the inverse of squaring a number, we could say, so the square root of nine would be three, right? We know four cubed is 64. So the cube root of 64 would give us four. So we kind of arrive at this pattern that if b to the n power is equal to a, then we could write b as an nth root of a, and it would look like what we see right here. And so we kind of have three parts here. We have the, the index, which is our n, so that's like square root, cube root, fourth root, so on and so forth. Then we have the number that we are taking the root of, that would be a, and that would be called our radicand. And then the entire, um, the entire radical, I hate to use the word in the definition, but the entire radical that you see is known as the radical, okay? All right, so let's talk about when or what kind of nth roots we could have here. So it says let n be an integer greater than one and let a be a real number. So we can have two options here, two columns. So n could be an even integer, so we're taking the square root, the fourth root, the sixth root, so on and so forth or n could be an odd integer, so we're taking the cube root, the fifth root, the seventh root, so on and so forth. So let's start off on the left, and let's say that we are doing an even integer for n, so we're doing the square root, fourth root, something like that. So if a is less than zero, then there are no real nth roots. So we're taking the uh, square root of zero, something like that. Excuse me, less than zero. Square root of a negative number, right? There's not gonna be any real roots there. Okay, now if a is equal to zero, there's one real nth root and that would be zero, right? The square root of zero is zero. And if a is greater than zero, there's two real nth roots. That would be the positive and the negative value. So even when we looked up here where we had the square root of nine, right? Ideally, we could say this is positive or negative three, okay? And so now let's talk about when n is an odd integer. So let's say we're doing the cube root, fifth root, something like that. So if a is less than zero, we do have a real nth root here. Because if we think about it, if we took the, 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 the cube root of negative eight, right, that would be negative two, because negative two times negative two times negative two would give us a negative eight. If a is equal to zero, we still have that one real nth root, it would be zero. And if a is greater than zero, we have one real nth root. Um, and that would be, uh, if we have n, the nth root of a, we would have a to the one over n, just the positive value there, okay? So let's look at a couple examples, and for these examples, I'm gonna be using my uh, TI-84 plus CE graphing calculator um, and just the, the root function on the calculator. And so I've done a video on how to do the square root, cube root, but also like the nth root, which is kind of what we're gonna be using today. And so I'll link that in the cards right now um, so that you can see how I'm doing, how I'm using my calculator to help me figure out the solutions here. All right, so for number one, it says, Find the indicated real nth roots of a. So it tells me my index is five and my radicand is negative 243, okay? So basically we're taking the fifth root. So I'm gonna hit my math button on my calculator. I'm gonna go down to the fifth option. And once again, you can see that, check out that video in the cards. I'll, I'll link it in the description below as well. Um, and you can check out how I'm doing this on my calculator. So I'm gonna type in five and then negative 243 and hit enter. And we get a negative three, okay? So we can go back to what we, um, our kind of our descriptions at the beginning or that we previously just looked at. So n was five, so that would be in the green column over here. And a was less than zero. So we had the one real nth root for that one, okay? Number two, we are taking the eighth root of 256. So eighth root, 256, and we get two, okay? So now for this one, we get two, but let's think about it. n was even and a was greater than zero. So n is even, a is greater than zero, so we should have two real nth roots. So we can write this, instead of just two, it would actually be positive and negative two. So two real nth roots there. All right, number three, we're gonna take the square root of negative 36. So now we got an even nth, or an even value for n, an even index, but we're trying to take the root, an even root of a negative number. So for this one, there are no real nth roots. Okay. All right, number four, we wanna do the cube root of 125. Okay, so we can use our calculator for this, but hopefully we have this one memorized. This would be five. All right, number five, we're gonna do the seventh root of zero. 
Well, anytime we do a root of zero, right? Notice here we had a is equal to zero, a is equal to zero. Our one real nth root is just zero. Okay, so zero for that one. And our last one, number six, we're gonna take the sixth root of 15,625. So sixth root of 15, 625 and we get five but once again we have an even index here so we're going to say positive or negative five okay and that is how you can find some real nth roots of a